When liquid is heated, it expands. Once the heat source is removed or turned off, the expanded liquid starts cooling and contracts. This phenomenon is called thermal expansion. In this video, we're going to cover what causes thermal expansion in plumbing, city and code requirements for thermal expansion, and what you and I can do as homeowners to keep our plumbing systems in good working order. When it comes to your home's plumbing, the water in your pipes is always in some sort of flux, either expanding or contracting as the temperature outside the plumbing and the water inside the plumbing changes. All these heat and cooling cycles are exerting pressure on your plumbing system, creating wear and tear. Once we realize this is a constantly changing system, it makes more sense as to why leaks appear and preventative maintenance, such as replacing supply lines to the washing machine, faucets, and toilets, are important preventative measures in keeping your home running smoothly. There are other factors at play, such as water hammer and the minerals in the water itself that also cause wear and tear on a system. But thermal expansion is another consistent player. How much wear and tear thermal expansion causes depends on quite a few factors. Do you have an open or closed plumbing system? A closed plumbing system has a backflow prevention assembly that stops the water from your plumbing system from feeding back into the water supply source. In a closed system, plumbing code also requires expansion tanks to help with thermal expansion from a storage water heater. These additional devices are important to minimize damage to pipes, appliances, and fixtures resulting from increased water pressures created by thermal expansion. In comparison, an open plumbing system allows the water in your plumbing to move back and forth without additional obstacles. For instance, when your tank water heater turns on, the hot water expands in volume and pushes back into the city supply. The same can be said for all of your neighbors. The back pressure from their tank water heaters gets pushed into your plumbing. Next, do you have a tank or tankless water heater? A tank water heater maintains a certain temperature and during the heating cycle, water pressure increases in the entire system. A tankless on-demand system does not store a body of water, so it does not exert the same back pressure on the system as a storage water heater does. As you can see with my 50 gallon water heater, a heating cycle run overnight to maintain temperature creates an increase of 25 to 30 PSI over the course of five minutes. In addition, how often your water heater runs heating cycles is another factor that is impacted by the location of your water heater. There is a huge difference between a water heater inside and a temperature controlled laundry room a garage in Arizona in the summer where the water heater could almost be unplugged, and a basement in the north where it better wear a sweater year round. Next, what is the ambient temperature surrounding the plumbing? Is it run through an attic with or without insulation around the pipes? Is the attic a conditioned space? Or not, as you can see here with the thermal camera pointed at the uninsulated drywall covering my attic entrance on a nice day in April. Or does your plumbing run below a slab on grade foundation? Is there exposed plumbing outside? Revisiting the original point on an open versus closed system. If you have an open system, your plumbing has many more variables dependent on your neighborhood and city usage based on everything we just went over. While a closed system eliminates all this variability, it has its own pitfalls because you're now reliant on one, two, or more pieces of equipment, which must be maintained, which we'll go over next. There are more factors, but you get the idea. There are a lot of sources to consider when it comes to thermal expansion and how much pressure it puts on a plumbing system. In order to accommodate for thermal expansion, as some cities have introduced in newer developments, there are a couple new additions into each plumbing system to make each house a closed system. A reduced pressure backflow prevention assembly of some sort along with an expansion tank for a storage water heater. Recall, a backflow preventer prevents water from flowing back into the city supply. You can think of it as keeping the city supply cleaner from all the water getting pushed back between you and your neighbors. A more common use, though, is a strategically placed backflow preventer on a sprinkler system, which prevents contaminants from flowing back into your drinking water. An expansion tank is the pressure neutralizer in the system. 
designed to handle a closed system's change in pressure with an air bladder. The air bladder is on one side, and once installed, the other side is filled with water. As the water heater turns on and water expands, the bladder compresses, taking the back pressure off the closed system. It is necessary to install an expansion tank when you have a tank-style water heater, also known as a storage water heater. Here's what code states regarding thermal expansion control in a plumbing system. The 2018 International Plumbing Code, also known as the 2018 IPC, covers thermal expansion control in section 607.3 where a storage water heater is supplied with cold water that passes through a check valve, pressure reducing valve, or backflow preventer, a thermal expansion control device shall be connected to the water heater cold water supply pipe at a point that is downstream of all check valves, pressure reducing valves, and backflow preventers. Thermal expansion tanks shall be sized in accordance with the tank manufacturer's instructions and shall be sized such that the pressure in the water distribution system shall not exceed that required by section 604.8. These additional parts introduce quite a bit of pressure stability on all appliances and faucets, along with giving the ever-expanding city some relief from additional thermal expansion. It does come at a cost. You may need to pull a permit to have one installed. Regular testing is required to make sure these components continue to work. They eventually have to be replaced and there may be possible city regulation. This is a good time to note, some city water meters have internal check valves. So if you're in a situation like me, where you have an open system and the city upgrades your water meter to a new smart meter, beware that newer meters might include a check valve or the city may include a separate check valve in the meter box at the same time. If that happens, don't wait for you and your neighbors to start repairing appliances connected to plumbing like crazy. Be preemptive. Grab a cheap water pressure gauge, set up a Wisecam time lapse for a day or two, and watch your water pressure. If you see the needle moving to 80 PSI and higher, you can be the hero in the neighborhood getting the news out that everyone should install an expansion tank and possibly some means of controlling the increased pressure. And you can use the Wisecam for so many other experiments. No matter what kind of plumbing system you have, it's still a good idea to regularly replace your supply lines on your washing machine, toilet, and sinks. You can check out this past video on how to replace your toilet connectors and for tips to make your next swap even easier. One step further is keeping tabs on plumbing so that a small leak is caught and a huge break is stopped. Running a test with a water pressure gauge will catch leaks of every size. However, if you would like the ability to detect leaks 24 seven and shut off the water supply, preventing further water damage, definitely check out smart water monitor and shut off systems. An added benefit is these water monitors have pressure sensors, which also send you alerts when increased or decreased pressure is detected over or under certain thresholds. There are several water monitor and shutoff systems on the market, and you can check out my other videos on FinPlus and Flow by Moen, which are linked in the description. I also have a lot more videos lined up on plumbing leak detection, including discovering the smallest leak I can detect using all these tools. Now that we know about thermal expansion and how to control it in a closed system, the spikes of pressure I showed at the beginning is the behavior you'd see in a closed system with a failed expansion tank. However, they were actually baseline tests on my home's normally open system with the main shutoff closed. When I started extended water pressure gauge small leak testing, I did not introduce any leaks in the system. This is where I initially discovered the phenomenon of thermal expansion from my water heater. Next week's video is the backstory on thermal expansion and DIY leak detection and covers how to handle thermal expansion when you're attempting to discover a small leak with a water pressure gauge, water monitor, or any other tests measuring a loss in pressure. Thanks for watching and I will see you next Friday.